We all have regrets in life, things we wish we could just take back. Some of us have let that one person get away, others trouble with the law, and some of you have probably developed a highly radioactive virus which is designed to cure all ailments but must be put in one of your coworkers' bodies for temperature control and development without telling them. It's oddly specific. Regardless, after everything we've done in life, it's sometimes hard to believe we deserve a second chance. When that chance comes around, maybe some of you capture it, others let it slip. The point being, sometimes in life you do whatever you can to succeed, and you don't. And you will regret all the actions you did to get to that point. You second guess all the steps you took and think to yourself, next time will be different. And it isn't. Sometimes you just lose. And there isn't a better group of people to help me talk about regrets and losing than the crew of the USS Hephaestus space station, currently seven and a half light years away from Earth, orbiting a dwarf star. This dysfunctional crew deals with life and death situations, all while being bombarded with pop culture references and solar radiation. Join me on my expedition into the next frontier as we attempt to understand Wolf 359. Wolf 359 was a sci-fi audio drama which began in 2014 and ended in 2018. Created by Gabrielle Urbina, the story follows the crew of the Hephaestus space station as they orbit a dwarf star. The original crew of communications officer Doug Eiffel, definitely not evil Dr. Alexander Hilbert, onboard artificial intelligent ERA, and communication officer Renee Minkowski start the show as a group trying not to kill each other during their recorded logs one day at a time. However, the facade of their mission begins to fade and the yellow brick road they have traveled down leads behind the curtain. The crew of the Hephaestus was not sent on an exploratory mission among the stars. They were sent to die. As the crew comes in contact with extraterrestrial life, they discover an imposter among the crewmates, and all hell breaks loose. Upon the discovery of E.T. sending them old-time radio broadcast, Hilbert enacts his sleep agent mode and attempts to incapacitate the remaining crew. You see, this is not Hilbert's first time on the Hephaestus. He was a member of the previous crew, a crew which he killed off. However, he did not act on his own. He was aided by the very people who sent the crew into space in the first place, Goddard Futuristics, led by the cheerfully bleak Mr. Cutter. Luckily for Eiffel and Minkowski, Hilbert loses. Eiffel and Minkowski eventually hit their breaking point and struggle to find a way to push on, until the show takes a complete turn from an anthology in a star's orbit to a full-blown space opera. The crew is joined by the Hephaestus' previous commander, Isabel Lovelace, a distraught prisoner of the stars hell-bent on revenge. After her daring escape from the previous mission, she returns. Or so we think. From there, the crew attempt to return home and enact vengeance on those who put them in this position, but that too goes wrong. Eiffel is left adrift in space as he slowly floats towards his death. Meanwhile, the remaining crew of the Hephaestus are marooned as they run out of options, supplies, and sanity. Luckily for Eiffel and the crew, Eiffel are rescued by, let's just say, Mr. Cutter's personal winter soldiers. Kepler, Maxwell, and Jacoby immediately come off as standoffish, but try to emphasize they are only there to complete the mission and to help the crew of the Hephaestus. However, that quickly becomes untrue. You see, the crew is not being rescued, they're being imprisoned as they're only saved to be forced to orbit the star even longer. They attempt to break free, start mutinies, create plans, but they all fail. And when they get a foot up and they seem to be making more progress, they fail again and again. Eventually they succeed, only to be followed by more failure. No matter what the crew of the Ephesus does, they lose. No more, no less, they just lose. Characters get killed, sacrifices are made, threats are upheld. As you put on your headphones and listen to either the noble sacrifice or a heartbreaking death, you soon realize it was all for nothing. They still lost. And so is life. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, sometimes you are met with an unsatisfying ending. You are met with failure. We are close to five years disconnected since the conclusion of Wolf 359. So unlike my episode on the White Vault, I'm comfortable telling you a little bit about how it ends. The crew of the Hephaestus eventually succeeds. They fight their way out of their situation with the help of some grit, 
luck, and purely astronomical occurrences. However, it's not without a cost. Someone dies, a member of the crew's mind is maimed, and they lose parts of their personality and memory. Even when you win, you lose. And such is life. Whether it's sports, academics, or relationships, you have to give something in order to succeed. Because winning has a cost. Your time, energy, money, mental well-being have to be put on the line in order for you to win. Some of the greatest victors in human history are actually some of the biggest losers. Athletes put everything on the line just to make an extra shot during the clutch. Academics risk everything so they can find a solution. Romantics do all they can for the prospect of being happy. Winning has a cost. Which is why the prospect of losing is so difficult for people to grasp. They can't imagine themselves paying the price of winning and receiving a defective product with no money back. So many of us, maybe it's you listening, are afraid of losing. You'd rather not try to win to begin with. However, rather ironically, choosing not to even try is still in itself losing. Wolf 359 is 61 episodes long. By the way, when I, when I did the White Vault, I re-listened to every episode so I can better understand the theme I wanted to present, and I wanted to do the same for this episode, but if you were to listen to Wolf 359 straight, including all the mini episodes, it would take you over 35 hours. So please forgive me if my memory of the show is a bit warped. It's been a while. Wolf 359 is 61 episodes long, and in that time, the crew of the Hephaestus loses maybe 80% of the show. Yet at the very end, as they ride off into the black abyss of space returning home, they did it. They won. I hate to be the one to tell you this, so I'll speak on behalf of the crew of the Hephaestus. Sometimes you lose. A lot of people say there are only two guarantees in life, death and taxes. And my response to that is always, that is, that is the stupidest thing I, I've ever heard in my entire life. Like some places don't even have taxes. And like, what, what if that means, like, what, for example, regardless, if you... there's more things in life guaranteed than death and taxes, losing being one of them. You're going to lose someone you love, lose interest in a hobby, friends will come and go, and you won't get that job or the girl you've been dreaming of. And some of you listening are thinking to yourself, oh, that won't be me. I choose not to have friends and I, I never loved anyone. I, I simply don't lose. And okay, Patrick Bateman, that, that might be true. But then at that point, you have lost your humanity. Even if losing still scares you, don't look at it as losing. Einstein once said that failure is success in progress. You're going to lose, so you might as well take it with a grain of salt and use it to your advantage. Wolf 359 is a long show, with a lot going on. Some episodes you can skip, others you don't need to pay close attention to about half the time. But when you do listen to the show, you listen in on a group of people trying to do one thing. It isn't search for aliens, create radioactive medicine, or fight mutant plant monsters. No, it's to go home. So if you ask yourself how much losing can one endure, that entirely depends on what your end goal is. How much are you willing to pay to achieve what you want? And for those of you still worried, there is another thing which is guaranteed in life. Winning. Because sometimes you lose, but sometimes you win. <laughs>